So I'm going to talk a little bit about this new feature that allows an energy affordability analysis. And I think that increasingly considering environmental justice implications for different energy and climate mitigation scenarios is key, has become key to planners and is really also key to achieving a just clean energy transition. And maybe many of you in the room are already thinking about how they can add that dimension to their models and their planning exercises, really thinking more clearly about what different policy pathways one might prefer in order to uh, increase equity in a society overall. And so we've developed this new affordability feature that allows to study the affordability of the different policy pathways for different groups. And those different groups might be different um, population groups. Um, they could also be different industrial sectors, depending on what is being considered um, as the, the kind of group to protect or to um, increase equity of. And so this new feature allows examining impacts on total energy costs for those groups, total device costs, energy affordability. So for example, a typical threshold um, for energy affordability is that only 4% of annual income goes towards um, energy costs. And so evaluating that using a LEAP model, um, and we also allow um, looking at energy uses and prices by the different groups. And there is an, an, a new function add on to this affordability feature that enabled specifying targeted subsidies or tariffs for specific groups, fuels and technology. So really allowing to drill into this problem and um, finding ways to alleviate the pressure of energy costs for different groups. And so now I'm going to share um, my or demo this in the LEAP model. And so this is um, a data set, it's a pretty simple model that really just only has a demand branch and three different residential uh, branches that represent different income groups. Um, and when you see this interface, you can immediately see that a new icon has appeared um, in this new version called affordability. And so this is where the results of the affordability analysis will be shown. In order to turn on this feature, you have to go to settings. Um, and you can see that under the demand branch, there's this new option, affordability, which you have to tick in order to turn this on. And then the second thing you have to do is to turn on the affordability analysis for the specific fuels that are used in the branch where you want to carry out your affordability analysis. And so since this is a residential sector analysis, um, I've turned on just a few fuels that are typically used in that sector, electricity, kerosene, LPG, wood and charcoal. And so for any fuel that you want to do this analysis for, you would have to tick on affordability analysis here. Then the third step is to actually turn on the affordability analysis in the properties. And so the specific branches where you want to carry out the affordability analysis, you right click onto them, the little branch properties um, window pops up and there is this option where it, Leap is asking you whether this is an affordability branch. So you select that, uh, you have to do that for all the sub branches that you want to carry out the affordability analysis for here, this is already turned on. And what you immediately see when you turn on affordability is that a number of new variables pop up. For example, annual income. So these are all variables that are required to carry out the affordability analysis. So when you have to add the annual income or the value added for that particular sector, in this case, it's a residential model. So we put in annual incomes. Um, the distribution is pretty typical, I think, for um, for many countries where the upper income groups um, have an annual income that is much greater than the middle income groups. And then in this case, the low income group really is a below poverty level group. Um, if we look at the activity levels, you can see that the upper income group comprises about 10% of the population, the largest group being the middle income group. Other variables that pop up are these prices for the fuels for which we turned on the availability analysis. And so for each of the income groups for which I'm going to do this analysis, I have to add a, um, a customer price, an end user price. And that price can differ 
for the different income groups. And I've got this for all the fuels that I, this variable for all the fuels that I turned on the affordability analysis for the charcoal prices, electricity prices, kerosene prices, LPG prices, wood prices. And so I'm just gonna hop onto the electricity price here because there is this new function that I hinted at in the overview, which is the tariff function. And this tariff function, when you can hover over it and it will pop up the leap help menu on the right hand side, allows you to specify tariffs for specific fuels, which you might want to do in the case of electricity. And it really allows you to specify, for example, um, base prices, um, allows you to specify if there is different rates for different usage uh, brackets. So if I go onto the function, you can see the different um, details that this function is asking you. It asks you what the billing period is, which customers this, bill, this uh, price applies to, whether there is a fixed cost for, in this case, um, getting electricity, whether there is a flat rate, um, and then whether there is different rates for different usages. Um, and so in this case, I just have one rate uh, for a base usage up to 180 kilowatts per month, and then a second rate if consumers or customers exceed that rate. So this really allows you to represent the types of tariffs that are quite typical um, for electricity prices now. And it also allows you to specify, to really encourage, for example, to users to use less electricity or to um, change prices between different consumer groups. Then there is also a variable called customer costs, which um, allows you to specify annualized non-fuel customer costs. Um, these are um, across all the technologies. Um, so household installations or insulation costs, upgrades to connect to electricity, those would be specified here. Um, and then there is the typical demand cost variable that many of you are probably familiar with from the old version of LEAP. Here in this particular model, the demand costs are specified under the sub branches. So you can already see the um, upper income country, upper income households here are all electrified in the middle income and the low income groups. There are some households that are non electrified. And then I'm, um, I've included a number of different end uses, lighting, refrigeration, cooking with different technologies below them. And you can also see that refrigeration and lighting has an efficient technology, LEDs or efficient refrigeration. And so here I've specified the demand costs for the technologies because they're essentially specific to purchasing that particular technology device. So for example, the price of incandescent bulbs and LED um, bulbs. This annualized cost function, many of you might be familiar with, it spreads out the costs of a device over the lifetime of that device. Um, so the first part of the expression is the actual cost, and then the second part of the expression is the lifetime. So now let's go over to the, look at some of the results that this affordability analysis produces. So you can see these uh, um, affordability results for all the different groups for which you specified that you wanted to do and then the affordability analysis for. Here we have the low income, the upper income and the middle income groups. Um, just going to look at the low income group here. Um, the, this new feature allows to look at the total energy costs by fuel, electricity, kerosene, LPG, wood and charcoal, and then sums them up. The device costs by fuel, and then it calculates a really useful indicator here, which is the cost burden, so the percent per income. And you can see immediately that here in the low income group, the energy cost exceeds that 4% affordability threshold. So in this particular country, the cost burden of energy is actually quite high to the low income group. And if we go over to the middle income group, we can see that for this group, energy is actually much more affordable. It's 1.8% of the total income. And then some other results that this new LEAP feature provides is the average energy use per customer, so per household here, and the average energy price. Um, so you can look at, at that. Um, 
So something that we might typically consider in developing a climate mitigation scenario is to electrify a system and develop um, particular, um, to really develop efficient devices and in increase uptake of efficient devices. And so here, I'm now going to create a mitigation scenario that considers electrification and efficient devices. And in this scenario, I'm going to increase the electrification of households to 100% by 2040. And I'm also going to have older electrified households use 90% of efficient devices. I'm going to run this. And now I can look at the scenarios side by side. So this is showing the affordability analysis results for the two scenarios that I'm now considering in the year 2040. And I'm going to go to the low income households. And you can see that electrifying the households in this case has increased the cost burden as a percent of income to 10.3%. And that is both because more households are electrified and electrification in this particular model means that they're consuming more energy because they're using refrigeration, which they previously haven't. Um, so they have an overall increased burden in um, getting in or paying for electricity. And then they're also buying more, have to buy more expensive devices because the model is pushing them or the analysis is pushing them to buy efficient devices. And so their device costs really increased from just over $50 to $200 in this particular case. And you can see here at the bottom how the average energy use increased more than doubled um, between the two scenarios. If you compare that to the middle income group, their costs didn't change at all. So clearly this is a scenario that is um, putting the greatest burden on the low income group, which you know, is generating a, a world that essentially is becoming less equitable. And so we might want to devise um, a scenario or look at policy options that really avoid placing the burden um, and the low income group in this case. And so I'm going to create a new scenario that applies some subsidies to the low income group. Switch over to that scenario. And I'm going to do this in two ways. One, I'm going to subsidize electricity costs for the low income group. So instead of paying 40 cents per kilowatt hour, I'm going to reduce that cost by 20 cents. So they're only paying half the original cost. And then I'm also going to provide essentially a subsidy to purchasing more efficient um, refrigeration. So here I'm going over to the refrigeration branch, the efficient branch, and instead of paying the actual price of the refrigeration, maybe the government in this case could offer low-income groups um, $500 for um, purchasing a new refrigeration unit. So if I now go back to the affordability analysis, it's calculating um, I can look, compare the different scenarios again. One can see nothing changed for the middle income group. They didn't get any subsidy in this particular case. Um, but in the low income group, I'm now able to actually reduce the cost burden of energy. Um, I've reduced the energy cost, the electricity cost, because I'm providing this lower rate to low income groups. And I'm also reducing the device costs for refrigeration units, um, really lowering um, the cost, the overall device costs that cost customers will be paying in this particular income group. And now I've actually reduced the cost burden for energy a little bit below the baseline scenario. And you can see here as well that the price, the average energy price for electricity is halved, which is what we would expect given that the first rate was 40 cents and now it's only 20 cents for this particular uh, group. And you can, so you can explore these different results and um, this feature really allows to consider some of the scenarios that are quite typically uh, 
now considered in order to lower the cost burden of uh, climate mitigation policies for different groups of different income groups. And one could, for example, consider adding these uh, these government subsidies in this case to the prices for um, the middle and the upper income group. Um, if I switch over to the upper income group, you can see that their cost burden for energy makes up a really small component of their overall income. So one could think about how you um, pass on the cost that is incurred to the government of providing these types of subsidies to some of the other groups that might be less marginalized or less precarious. So this is the new affordability feature, um, which I think really allows to, to look at some of these um, key questions as um, one looks at different energy and climate policies. Um, and it provides a lot of the results in a really easy to use uh, fashion. Um, so it really allows people to use um, this type of analysis much more easily than in a previous version where a lot of this would have been needed to be done externally to leap 